didn't really see, though, Blair, disappointingly, is any of Entz's players truly step up to the mark and deliver. Yeah, and that's what we saw from the side of G2, right? Hades having a little bit of a quiet game, but we'll get to that a little bit later on as Entz are off to a very quick start here. Hades already creeping up towards mid with a 50 in hand, duking it out with Hunter and a sliver of vision for Hunter, but that's all he needs to find Hades' head. As is so often the case, just give him a pixel and he will exploit it and splatter adversaries. Players up on the donor, two of them, Jax and Hunter still in position. Hunter mainly just baiting for Jax to have the freebie frag in the back, but they're also being pushed in meanwhile from main. And it's Diha who had some pretty big moments in the early stages of Dust 2, especially in the pistol, which remember they won the first pistol round and it was mainly off his back. And that's why his aim is on point. He also dinks Jax at range and puts him in such an awkward position, but Jax is passing the test so far, dropping the bomb carry where he stands before Alexi goes in through red. And finally, Nico does spill the bomb out one more time. Two on two, but Monacy is making roofs round the back and and that's going to be mad and put down with authority. Diha still alive. Started the round with the first frag and will be coming full circle for end. Should they win this? And they will. The pole reign supreme. Huge round, huge round coming in there from Dia, and he's been so clutch. We talk about how Hades has been kind of quiet in the first map. Sphinx is the guy you're looking at as well, especially on this T side. We saw the desk break it down where Maui mentioned how, you know, it, it is going to be Sphinx kind of playing that config role on the T side. Config probably, in my opinion, one of the best T side ancient players out there at the moment. And we talk about all these guys, but you can't forget Diha, how instrumental he was, and even some of the few rounds that Enz were able to convert in that first map. So, huge, huge round coming out from Diha there. Get the flank in all the way from the A bomb side and able to close it out in that one versus two. Force Vine going to be coming in here as Sphinx will immediately dispatch off Nico with Monacy with the scout and Sphinx will immediately trade Madden and that is something that Dusk actually brought up earlier on for Monacy and his pathing when it comes to his, fall, his fallback routes. It needs to be a little bit more safer. As I say that though, Hunter finds Snappy and all of a sudden it's a 3v3. It is the cavalry and the support beginning to arrive though up on the ramp. We'll see both Hades and Diha taking shape. Sphinx has already made up enough room. Flash in his eyes, blinded momentarily, does take a headshot, but the MP9 at that range will not finish him off. Now Alexi behind the Molotov had a chance, but it seems like he may have let it slip out of his hands. That could have been the moment that saw Entz potentially fall in this second round for Spy. Instead though, Alexi can really only save this 5-7 in Kevlar, and Entz will be off to a 2-0 lead here on Ancient. Looked a little scary there, but great work coming in from Sphinx. Going for this duel, it's not really having much backup as well. He's pretty much on the ace, unfortunately won't be able to find Alex B. He's far, far away from where the rest of the action took place. But yeah, just to continue the, on that on that trend of thought where you know Dust was speaking about when it comes to Monacy, we saw how impactful it could be on Dusk. We saw how impactful he is on almost every other map with the AWP. On the CD side though, it's the way you know his, his fallback route usually leaves him in a very uncomfortable spot where he gets caught on the open and ends. It's about a trading. We saw the really, really sick flip shot coming out from him, but just the way the the spacing and the grouping from Ents able to make sure that they're able to get these trades efficiently. Uh, and ensure that even if they do lose a couple of players, if they get the bomb down, you know, it's 3v2, that's fine. That's fair enough. You have the individuals and the right protocol to play those, and, and to play those post plants. It's Alexi B. Okay. Runs on in with a save 5-7. He's going to find one. Hunter as well looking to poke and prod. And these are the rounds where G2 can be dangerous. When these are the rounds where, you know, they don't really have much to lose. You just have the pistols to work with. And they get hyper-aggressive. And that's when they could potentially catch some of these players off guard. And if you lose an AK, it falls in the hands of someone like Nico, Hunter, or Monacy. That's when some of these rounds, which should be a guaranteed win for you, kind of spirals out of control. Good nade there from Snappy. Able to get a trade, a little bit of a belated trade on towards Alexi B. As slowly but surely ends, will group up together, heading towards a bomb site where Hunter, he's got a Deke. And Monacy, just a USB, but this Deagle, we've seen it happen in the past. We certainly have. Plus the fact that he's going to go unchecked from the cave, so he can have his back completely covered right now. Hunter, what do you have up your sleeve? One kill. And it starts to run out of ammunition, though. He didn't get back cleanly, and that costs him his life. Snappy will not fall to his hands. 
A lot of damage inflicted though. Jackson Nico still with a chance of a Nico. Spammed up through the smoke. We'll play no for the part in this round. Beginning to believe in a potential G2 miracle, but Ents weren't interested. And they moved to a 3-0, but of course, here comes the first full purchase on the side of the CTs. Yeah, this is going to be the, the first real tense test here for the side of Ents. And if you actually go back to some of the earlier games Ents used to play, and, and this is to add on to what uh, our desk touched upon, for Snappy and his style of calling, it's very heavily based around spawn based calling, right? It's going to be off the spawn, they're just going to be going for this execute, some of these set plays. And if you're able to stymie them, if they're able to keep them kind of pinned down and asphyxiate them, keep them pinned behind a double dose, keep, not, don't give them the mid control early on, it's, that's when I feel like sometimes ends you struggle a little bit. This is a while ago, right now I feel like they have gotten much more comfortable, some of the individuals, some of the youngsters, they've kind of been given the freedom, the autonomy to work with, but look at this aggression, Nico spots on. And also the second players as well, and he's going to find Snappy. They are getting pincered, and they are getting absolutely annihilated here. Two nice opening picks from G2, and they will fall back Hades. However, if to team up with his teammate, the Sphinx, to at least get a trade on the Nico, but they have absolutely no map control right now. Alexi out for the peak. The flash was good. And Alexi narrowly missing out on the chance to bag himself a Diha, which would be a very... Rewarding kill, considering how solid he's been. Basically won the pistol simultaneously with only the Glock. And now Diha jumping down into the Bogdan's Law has the 13 HP to his name. Molly tossed over on middle, forces Hunter out into a different angle, but is still facing middle. Ooh. And that's to his detriment. Spinks on the drive-by, just smashes him straight in the forehead. And in doing so, Ents have a chance. Now, there's only 30 seconds left, and as mentioned, two players are low, and they also have themselves Monacy to contend with, with the AWP peeking round the corner ever so slowly. It may only require one kill from Monacy, but he misses his chance. He was so on point, the entirety of Dust 2, and could that miss prove to be costly? It's at least going to cost him his life. They may not anticipate the triple stack. Alexi B has the ball, but oh, but they deal with him. If he was able to survive through one donut and just get round the corner, he could have won off the back of time. Instead, though, Ents get a 4-0 lead. Spinks has come alive. He has come alive here, Vince. 12 and 1 on a T side with four rounds. His 12 kills in four rounds. That's ludicrous. And this round, like you said, all LXCB had to do was stay alive. And Spinks catches him with the last final bullets in his magazine. He has an average of three kills per round. <laughs> that's ludicrous. Even though it's still early days, that's actually kind of obscene as Spinks. He's a player that Pimp and Maui mentioned is going to be the thorn in the side of the G2 defense. And he's showing why. Right now, though, pistols for the side of G2, they will have to go for just the upgraded uh, hand cannons in the form of the, of the Deagle, the 5.7s, and even a CZ in play over here. And just going to take this one slow. That is uh, kind of David do a little bit more damage, but uh, the pillar... Taking the brunt of the force. Madden, though, he's pushed in deep. And then Mac 10 he can just go for a drive-by here. Smoke is well placed. There is one encounter active. Positions tossed in from Alexi B, though, to stop Cave being forced in on B-side. So pretty much just cancel each other out. The thing is, though, the Ents have tons more utility to fall back on. The same could not be said for G2. Ents should be very weary of a potential flank, though. Must have a good idea as to the current economic standing of their opponents. And Snappy makes short work for Galaxy B. He'll play no further part in this round. Now Madden is given the green light to press aggressively. This is where he's in his element. One kill with the Mac 10. He's picking enough, but Monacy with a deagle. Puts it between the eyes of Diha. And with 30 seconds left, the bomb will be finalized onto the site. The aforementioned CZ is all that remains as an arsenal of weaponry on the side of G2. No flashes, no kits available to Hunter. Hoping he can extend his kill count to four. Is successful on those endeavors, but it costs him 87 health. He'll gladly pay that price, though, especially if the reward is an AK-47. And he tries to dip out of there. Snappy gets flashed into the peak, down to 28 HP. And now Hunter is just trying his best to survive. I think he will be afforded this luxury, but it still will read Blair. 5-0 to Ents on their T side, already with a great half. Looking very comfortable, our snapping is man. And, and, and this is uh, 
it's great that it's playing out this way because I 100% agree with how the devs were alluding to how this ancient T side from Ents can be absolutely deadly. Overall, the CT and T side and G2 left a little floundering. That being said, they really haven't been afforded the opportunity to wield you know, the full uh, arsenal that many that many times, right? So once again, we have a chance here for G2 to show what they've got on the CT side as the op once more will come in, will come out for Monacy. The AK-47 salvage in the previous round, the hands of Hunter, the rest of them with A1, and a lot of utility as well. Three man push towards mid early on, trying to wrest control from Encio as Monacy Ooh. goes with a very, very fast flick, but unfortunately it won't find its mark, and it's still sticking around. He's sticking around because he's got his teammates nearby in towards Jaguar in the form of Alexi B, but Ents, they're fine just waiting and biding the time. Nico, however, finds Hades, and that's an important, crucial kill. Looking for more as Madden tries to just poke and prod, maybe try and get the trade. And G2, though, they're looking to try and keep Ents pinned down, and it is working out. DHL does reply back with one, but it is a two versus four. That being said, Monacy and Nico are very low, but doesn't matter when you're hitting shots like that. Diha has been put down, and G2 will pick up their very first round here on Ancient CT side. Ents now will have more than enough funds, albeit on Madden, just 3,300. And a tactical timeout has been deployed from the T's as a result. Already nearly equalizing the grand total of rounds they picked up on Dust 2. But I don't think that necessarily paints a full picture as to how that game went. If you have just joined us, it was a pretty nail-biting game to start off with at least. There's a lot of clutches. Diha started very strong. It was mainly a fact that Hades had a bit of a slow game, which is the same for the start of this one. But Sphinx is just firing on all cylinders. Meanwhile, on G2, we've seen glimpses, but Monacy hasn't quite had that same impact. Tactical timeout now will be coming to a close. And Ents, as anticipated, with a full purchase. Looking to try and get aggressive, perhaps. The thing is, though, Blair, G2, yes, you've got yourself around. That's excellent. You've got to build off that, though. You cannot just be a one-pump jump. Like, you, you've got to put s some rounds together and string them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that goes without saying. And this time around, Ents are like, yeah, we're not going to keep giving you control towards mid. Nice. That was a uh, bit of team flash. I'm not too sure. Hunter dealing the damage with bullets and the nade will finish off the job. As the IGL for Ents will fall early on. But at least they do have control of mid. And G2 not looking to replicate what they did the previous round. So they're going to be playing in a much more passive position. We have two players towards A. Hunter playing all the way towards Donut. Now, if they go for a hit here right now for Ents, they could actually get the bomb down here. Smokes will be deployed. Madden blind for a second. Alex, I'm not sure if you heard the player as he is being kept at bay by the bullet. By Diha, Sphinx will peek on through. And Madden, amongst all the chaos and confusion, finds Nico in a 4v3 here with a bomb getting planted. If I'm G2, I just save your weapons. Like, the, the op in the hands of Monacy, not ideal for a retake uh, scenario on a map like this. And just like that, what you feared has transpired, Vince. G2, they wanted, they needed to string a few rounds together here, but Ents, they stumble once, they don't stumble again. Immediately rested back from G2, going for a bit of a contact play towards the B-bomb side, and unfortunately for G2, because they had gone for a li little bit of a gamblish stack towards the A-side, uh, three members towards the donut A-bomb side area, leaving just Nico and... Alexi B to hold on to B bombsite defense, and they were in really good positions. You can see, if you look at the radar, for example, you can see what Alexi B died. Nico as well caught looking the wrong way towards short, getting shot inside his head by Madden. It's a pretty simple round coming out from Enster, pretty much up for contact play. But the way they were able to get that, despite losing Snappy early on, again, shows why Enster is so comfortable on this map. Well, the good news for G2 is they saved three weapons, and they would have been able to buy regardless, but this just allows them to have all the fine trimmings and, of course, more importantly, two AK-47s, the premium assault rifle. That's always a huge boon to your arsenal of weaponry. See if any early engagements, aggression comes to the forefront. Smoke up onto red. Monacy, good spawn, gets in close proximity, but again misses out on a shot. This time, it's afforded by a flashbang. He is having a little bit more trouble here, Monacy, though. Nowhere near the same in levels of impact as the early rounds on Dust 2. And now flashes a plenty of flurry off them, but Snappy still connects onto the head of Lexi B. And in doing so, ends again are in a 5v3. However, 
Hunter is keeping this A side a little bit more grimly contested as far as Enter concerned. Two frags already down, keeping himself in the fight for the time being and allowing his teammates to move in as well. Hunter's picked up a third, and now they can try and pincer in and flank Hades, who's given his position away. Hunter has finally fallen, but he will fall a hero. However, no one will be there to celebrate him unless Nico can clutch this one out. 30 HP left on Snappy. Plenty of time allocated on the clock which is for the better of Snappy because he has to still retrieve that bomb and come across to potentially plant it. But Nico's already making moves into Donut. He's a couple of steps ahead. Even if Snappy gets this plant down, he is surely a goner in just a few moments time as Nico is waiting. But Snappy manages to pick correctly. He threads the eye of the needle. This game of cat and mouse continues right now. Nico does have a kit, however. And the bomb's not planted for Snappy currently. Remember, 30 HP, one bullet may seal the deal. But Snappy stands tall and delivers with a 4K and take a 7-1 lead. Nico did everything there, Vince. It was Hunter and Nico. Hunter from a position where he should have maybe got one, maybe two. He finds three huge kills, turns it around, and but Snappy. Snappy, oh Snappy. The IGL also really stepping up with the 4K and also outreading Nico. He didn't waste any time, he planted the bomb, and what a quick flick. We've got to remember, he was very low on health, and instantly, of all people, decapitates Nico. 7-1 for Enz, and sure, G2 can go for yet another buy, but right now they need more than just buys, and oh, the Molotov dealing a ton of damage onto Snappy and Pinks, Sphinx. And one well-placed nade, and that could be even almost a double here for G2 as they go back to what they did earlier Vince, the one round they won where they were just being hyper aggressive towards ramp the smoke for double doors and trying to get control off mid and towards the, the lane Jaguar area and ends now. They're aware of what G2 are up to. How are they going to extricate themselves from this position? That remains to be seen. Mm, things slowing down a little bit. We've seen a lot of very aggressive and fast rounds. I think one of the main reasons why it's been a bit of a slower start here is because of that Molotov that you touched on, just eroding away Sphinx's health bar. Snappy was also affected in the process. And that's afforded G2 the luxury of getting up close. We have not seen this too often at all. Two players pushing down ramp. One via Jaguar. And it's Nico through the flash. They try to pincer in, but Madden stands tall. So much damage done through the doors. But no one else has fallen is a mystery. All four players below 20 HP. And it should be easy pickings at this stage for the rest of G2. It, that is actually disgusting from G2. They don't budge. Enter probably thinking, all right. All right, they probably use up the utility. They're probably going to be falling back right now. But no, G2, they still stick around. The second smoke is well being deployed. At ends, they just get whittled away through the smoke. And like you said, it's a miracle that these three players are still alive. There were four players there below 20 points of health. And yeah, there is no chance of fans turning this one around. Even though they had a little bit of time, they look at their health, they're like, yeah, no, we're sending this one out. It's okay. We still have money. Madden can buy for himself. Or actually, you know, Sphinx and Snappy can drop to Madden and Hades. It will still have a lot of utility to work with. The thing here for G2 is both the rounds of one have been with these really aggressive rounds where they are keeping ends pinned down towards double doors, towards mid. And they do it again for ends. Like, it can get very messy, or the only other avenue they have is maybe go for the A play, which we really haven't seen yet. We've seen them go for, like, late rotations, or, like, you know, coming down to 3v3s, sneaking their way towards A, but haven't really gone to see an A play coming out. As Snappy, looking to take the fight, looking to utilize the MAC-10, the mobility afforded by the MAC-10, but he will be taken down, and Monacy, with the AWP, finds Madden. Gonna get smoked off, but he's already picked up one, and with a second frag through the middle, and a third as well, it's looking good that G2, for the first time on this half, are going to string two rounds together. Now, Dina and Sphinx, I'm sure, are going to have something to say about that. 17 kills distributed between the two of them. 13 of which is on Sphinx. Maybe a little bit top-heavy. D-Hat, keep in mind, three of his four kills were in the pistol round. He basically single-handedly won that one. The bomb down for his team, a great headshot onto Monacy. Second kill is required though on the site before that becomes free. Nico is playing around the box, but Sphinx sprays him down before he gets caught from the side. And that's Jax that spills the bomb down with his life. Dina now in all sorts of bother, but he's picked up another one. And this is proving to be a costly round for G2. 
And he may not be done just yet, but Diha is unable to thread the kills and unable to steal and snatch away that round for Ents. Still a big round. It does a 2v5, Vince. Yeah. It's two versus five, and you said it best with Sphinx and D Hub. They were able to take away so many rifles there, ensuring that, sure, you, you, you give up the round, but at least you're able to deal an economic blow towards G2. So, yeah, G2 are going to be too happy with the way that round played out. And if you look at the cash, you can clearly see why three players sub $1,000. And this time around, Enz is going to switch things up. It's going to be fast play coming in towards B, and they're walking straight into the belly of the beast. Nico spraying, blinded through the smoke, finds two, looking for more. The third will fall as well, and they're getting absolutely obliterated. Monesty chiming in with a frag of his own, and G2 it took a while. Vince, but they're starting to come alive. Mm, they are starting to shift through the gears. And we're in an interesting position now where I don't think the money on Ents is particularly fantastic. Seems like the players are deep in thought. Conversations about smoking. And yes, the economy on Ents is pretty dire. So they're down to Deagles as it stands. Molly's through middle. We've seen this many a time. And a smoke on top of it as well. It's going to keep the tease at bay. Meanwhile, they're looking to push over on the construction side. This could put Alexi in a bit of an awkward position, but that Molotov is so good. Sphinx, though, passes the bullet in the head of Hunter before Nico makes an Ents and avenges his fallen teammate with three quick fire frags. Nearly picks up a very. Stylish fourth, and Diha is the last man standing. Bomb nowhere to be seen. And although Diha has already proven his worth multiple times over in this tournament with the Deagles, with the pistols, I think this may be asking a little bit too much of the man. Down he goes. G2 have made that deficit suddenly vanish down to just two. Bit of an eco cobra from Nico that round, you know, just the pistols, but it's okay, you know. For Ents, though, the previous round, it was the Force Buy, right? We had a, a, a Mac-10, we had some upgraded pistols, we had an AK-47, and now, they're just a round prior, it was just primarily the pistols for Ents. So, a couple of rounds that they have to had to give up to uh, G2, but yeah, but G2, stringing a few rounds together, here's some signs of life. But if you're Ents, though, Vince, you're still feeling very comfortable, right? Seven rounds on the T side of a map like Ancient, you're already sitting pretty comfortably. But considering you are a map down, you want to ensure that heading into the second half, you have as substantial a lead as possible. You want to get to that to that 10 round lead potentially. And look, 10 rounds on a T side at Ancient sounds ludicrous in all honesty, but then if you're Ents, a map that he's supremely comfortable on, it is definitely within the realms of possibility. That being said, three rounds remain here, and for them to get to 10, they need to win all three, which I won't lie, with G2 waking up right now, it does look unlikely. And G2 once more going for the aggressive play towards mid. Look at the amount of utility, a barrage of them just being lobbed down mid and also towards Jaguar and the ramp position. Yeah, and we, we've seen Ents try and capitalize and counteract this smoke and early Molotov as Alexi Ooh. picks up the kill, the wall bang onto Snappy. Unfortunate timing. We've seen Snappy himself try and push through mid with like a MAC-10, an AK, trying to beat that smoke based off spawn but there's always one or two players there to contend with him. G2 seem to have the winning formula right now with this mid control. Yeah, and, and that's something I alluded to earlier as well, where, you know, when if you're able to keep Ents pinned down, right, stymie the early map control they're vying for, that is when Ents, they seem to just wait it out. They don't really seem to necessarily have a, a secondary or tertiary plan. They kind of wait it out and then slowly try to make a late push, but because of the lack of, you know, just real estate you have, you don't know where the CTs are, right? And that's when you get mowed down, get completely chomped down in the jaws of players like a Nico or like a Hunter. Nico's gonna smoke himself off. Try and be lucky through the smoke. Still, it's a 5v4, and I love this. I love this from G2. Yeah. Being proactive, they know it's going to be the hit coming in towards A now, but the fact that mid is open, and so is Donut, they this could him. go very, very wrong. They saw Diha. They saw his back just around the corner. They know what's coming up. There's the first, and they know exactly where Eds are looking to finish. This information is worth so much. It's so valuable. Diha fully flashed. 18 seconds to go. First casualty for the CT has now been added to two. D has picked up three on 21 HP and may have enough time for the plant as well. He's gonna get sprayed through the wall and Hunter is going to spoil the party for Diha. However, his three kills 
so nearly got the job done, and now G2 are officially on fire. That's five rounds in a row. And you, you can see you can see the effect is having the contest. We were talking about how they were kind of scraping at the bottom of the barrel, trying to get, you know, just get a few buys here and there, but right now they are flush with cash heading into the penultimate round of the first half. I gotta say, yeah, yeah for a moment there, Vince, I was like, oh, oh, this is actually gonna happen, but Hunter will shut it down. G2 are being very proactive, they're being very aggressive in your face. Vulgar display of power here. There's Alexi B, spots a player out. They're gonna try and push him, the pistols again. Looking to get the work done as Nico once more trying to be aggressive, but the Tech Nines and the Deagle actually in the hands of Sphinx will find him, and that's a rifle picked up by Enz. Bear in mind, they only have pistols to work with right now. So G2, after this string of rounds of one, to slip up here would be, I wouldn't say disastrous, but it would be rough. Oh, this would sting. This would seriously sting, but Jackson and Alexi will hold the line on ramp. They have now been fallen and put in their place. Hunter through the smoke is going to come out second best, and it does appear that will be the case. G2 have money to go for this. Only one more round to play in this half, and Madden takes out Monacy. It was five rounds unanswered. The rot was beginning to set in, but Ents have alleviated. They've got themselves another couple round advantage, and that was with pistols, as you said, Flair. It may not completely break the back of G2, but that is going to feel like a gut punch from Mike Tyson. <laughs> I do not want to be receiving end of any punch from Mike Tyson. I like that guy on that flight. Uh, but eight to six, and still going to be very comfortable. And that was because Enz only had the pistols. They weren't really re respecting the smokes and the flashbangs. They're like, YOLO, screw it. It's just going to push on in. And that's how they're able to kind of punish G2 for the aggression. This time around, it's going to be a clean hit coming in towards A. They have the utility as well. They have the weaponry. And Jack's trying his best to stay alive. He's got back nearby towards Donut. But he's burning. He's getting riddled. He's in the smoke. I don't know what's going on. But a bomb will be planted by Diha. But there's still someone in the sight. And it is Nico. And he will strike. And he strikes hard. So far beyond driven as Nico is going to try and do this by himself. Diha is still stuck around the temple, praying to the CS gods that they can somehow give him safety, safe passage against this immortal fragger who keeps himself alive with the smoke. Now stuck at the back of the boxes, the rest of the support structure has arrived, including Monesty's Orp, and now the T's begin to capitulate. G2 will finish the half in six of seven rounds won, an 8-7 scoreline overall, this game could not be closer. 7-1 was a scoreline in favor of Ents before G2 finally woke up. They, they, I, I, I like the call coming from G2 there. The one slip-up they had was, of course, they went for that aggressive play towards ramp once more. Unfortunately, the pistols from Ents meant they weren't really going to be respecting the smokes or the utility being lobbed in. Once Nico falls, that's when things kind of spiraled out of control. But overall, good resurgence from G2, in all honesty. It, it really looked like Ents were going to be running away with that half. And in all, and let's be real, eight rounds is still... Very, very, very good for Ents. Some might even say the win condition has been more than satisfied, Vince, right? Like, you're looking at five rounds on the T side, that most teams are going to be happy with that. And Ents, a map, which is their playground, one of the best teams on the planet, alongside the likes of Astralis on this map, Ents are going to be feeling pretty mighty comfortable. And here we go, G2, pistol round. They have a couple of smokes, two Molotovs, and a flash. And that, for me, is telling of a B hit. Oh, Hades instantly gets headshot and he gets aim punched. It looked like his aim may have been on for a, a headshot there. It's Snappy to try and hold off by himself, but he has also crumbled under the pressure, under the strain as Hunter moves on for 16 frags. Both he and Nico have reached that mark. And Jax is going to catch Sphinx in the back, lines up the shot. Nice work with the P250. G2 looking good to pick up this pistol. Now do the world of good towards their overall round mark. Donut now being pushed through. Diha, the pistol king of the first half, is still alive, still kicking, and still claiming heads. As now Ents will be sweating bullets, hoping that this carry can continue to stay alive. The bomb's been spilled out. Madden pushing through the smoke, but Jax is there to greet him for a second P250 kill. Diha in trying so desperately to clutch this round out. It looked like he may have picked up a headshot there. Going back in again, but Alexi B will just about hold on for dear life. 
And it will indeed be an eighth round to G2. Diha is an, an, an animal in these pistol rounds. And again, again, for a moment there, I was like, is it going to happen once more? Is he going to just crush the dreams of G2 in some of these pistol rounds? But G2, they're able to stave off the beast. The flying Alexi B, a rare sight on this map of Ancient. But they will manage to get pistol round. Now it's about surviving this force buy from Ents, surviving the eco, and then slowly but surely trying to find their way back into this game as Alexi B finds Sphinx. And again, we got to go back to the to the beginning of the series and how our analysts were painting a picture that Ents on Ancient is pretty much a guaranteed win. Mm -hmm. And for G2 to take this, it's going to be a 2 and one where they need to take Dust2, which have done so in a very convincing fashion. And now they need to basically just sit through the pain that is Ancient and then head on to Mirage and get the win over there. But right now, if G2, if they're able to shock and awe Ents a little bit, things could they could get pretty interesting. I, I hate to do this, Blair, but it's kind of, we have to mention this. Do it. Hades is two and 12. Collectively in both maps, he's got nine kills. Yeesh. He's supposed to be one of their heavy hitters. You have Spinks going crazy on 18. He's top fragging on the server. He can't do much more. He needs Hades to wake up. If, uh, if Ents don't have Hades shop on the server, they may lose this map. Absolutely. And, and, and again, like you said, I hate to say it as well. It's something which I have mentioned on the desk earlier in the, in the past that Hades, we know how good it can be. We know how clutch it can be. We know how fantastic it can be with the, with the weapon of choice. And not just with the AWP. I think overall, all around, he's a very solid player. But he doesn't have the consistency of a Sphinx or even, the, you know, Diha or even Madden, right? Like, you can see Diha kind of, in my eyes, a secondary star of this team, after which there is Hades. But if he's not going to be stepping up in moments like these, that's when things get a little tricky. That being said, I'm just going to throw him a bone and say that, you know, it was a T side of Ancient. Opping, not ideal, one of the hardest sure. map, in my opinion, to be wielding the AWP. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it comes alive here on the CD side. Right now, though, it is going to be Ents just holding on to his pistols and keeping it for round number 18. To be fair as well, when your team is performing pretty well and you're an AWPer, sometimes you just don't get opportunities True. to try and play devil's advocate. But I also think when he has had chances, he hasn't really capitalized on the way you'd expect them to. G2, however, we're obviously discussing over this round because it's pretty much a four-player save and there's no reason for G2 to rush in here and potentially give across some of these rifles. They did pick up four of them. So nine players do survive come the end of the round and it will be G2 taking the lead. And if I'm not mistaken here, Blair, I believe this is the first time G2 have led this entire map. Yeah, considering the start ends had, it was looking very, very grim. G2, though, they can't lift their foot off the pedal quite yet, because for ends, they did hold on to their pistols. And even though they lost one member, another, uh, I think I do believe it was a 5-7 getting popped in, and we know what these players can be. Weaponry Sphinx and leading the charge. Is there a cubby? But Hunter will find a pain punch. Will be the undoing as Snappy trying to extricate himself from this corner and is doing a great job just dodging these nades. Trying his desperate best to stay alive. For the time being, the smoke will keep the members of, N uh, of G2, beg your pardon, at bay. And G2, they notice a bit of utility for the end side, but also know it's not too much. And okay, Snappy. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're just waiting for the smokes to dissipate, making sure there's no more uh, flashbangs or any utility remaining for the CTs, and then slowly they can, you know, they can go for the execute. They can creep and crawl their way into the site, but they don't much have much utility to the T's as Hades and Snappy finds Monacy, and all of a sudden the nightmare scenario here for G2 might actually transpire. Mm, perhaps not. Hunter appears to have grabbed his teammates and shook them to wake them up from their slumber. But Snappy may be about to close their eyes once again. Nico is playing with fire. Tagged heavily through the wall previously, down to 38 HP. One stray bullet, he'll be a dead man. Look at the audacity. Nico's dodging bullets and deals with Snappy. Counting the bullets in the deagle. He's like, right, six, seven. I'm good to start spraying now. I'm safe. And that's the kind of mechanics that you're looking for from a player that stature match the last player alive that's not a chance but it feels like maybe that chance is now coming on it's going to be 10-8 however because of their patience and because they're able to save four players they will have a buy coming up so a real chance now for ends to establish themselves on their ct side 
good composure there from G2. They slowed things down, and even when they lost a couple of players there, yeah, I think Hades getting a kill, he, although he did get traded immediately by the Molotov. And, and and I do believe it was Snappy finding the headshot. They didn't panic, right? They slowed things down to 3v3. Nico there, I, I don't even know how he walks around the ball that big. And he just finds Snappy, like you said, waiting for the bullet to run out. As the mid control comes in from both the sides, Hunter able to trade, finds Sphinx. But Snappy comes around the corner looking to take duels left, right, and center. And he finds both the cousins. And just like that, a minute and 30 seconds on the clock, and it's a 4v2 favoring it. Oh, Jax, though, he's going to try and resurrect this round, brick Ooh. by brick, bullet by bullet. Hades has a third kill. He didn't see him cross. I don't think he did, but Monacy may be on the chopping block next. Nice shot from Hades. That's more like it. Now, they need to get this one done cleanly because, again, their economy has not fully stabilized. Honestly, even losing three plays is going to sting them. But Jax is still in with a shot. There's still plenty of time in this round. The downside is he has no idea as to where the second player is. He knows Hades was last spot a donut, and now he's found out in the worst possible way as Madden drills him from the side. Expensive round there for Enz, though. And they're aware of it. That could be very dangerous. That could be very, very dangerous. Like, if Mon Monty obviously dying there from uh, by Hades taking him down towards Donut and the bomb getting dropped forced Jax to fall on back. But if Monacy's maybe just stayed alive towards the bottom of mid, maybe just held an angle, played it safe, maybe waited towards A, to the entrance of A, for example, and waited for, uh, for, for his teammate to just get the flank in from CD spawn, things could have really played on a whole different manner altogether. But at least for Ents, they have managed to stem the bleeding, at least for now. Tactical pause getting called by G2 here. As their uh, the journey on the less favored side of this map will continue. Snap, man, he's just taking matters in his own hands. Just like finds Hunter, spins around, 180 kill on the Nico. And the Madden being extremely proactive, not allowing Jax to just basically, you know, run around the map and do whatever he wants. But here we go, round number 20. It is gonna be still the buy coming out for the side of Ents. We have the MP9. G2 though, they have everything to work with. Mac in the hands of LXB looking to lead the charges. Sphinx and Hades will strike almost simultaneously, finding a couple of modesty replies back. So important, there's a Molotov down onto the donut. They need a smoke there. Finally, they put one into place. Sphinx is gonna have no more opportunities to slice and dice the G team. The G2 now defenders, I should say, but he decides to push past the smoke. And Monacy caught in no man's land. Jax, 16 HP, Alexi B is still alive, but now it's down to Jax, first frag goes his way, but there will be no follow-up, and Ents for the second consecutive round get it done at the cost of three lives. G2 just trying to go for a fast play towards A, but yeah, I'm not too sure where uh, the first kill came from from Sphinx, but the fact that Hades is at least able to get a second kill as well. G2 just perennially having a man disadvantage in that entire post plan situation. And yeah, the great flank coming in as well at the very end there from, from Menz. They do lose a couple of players here, but thankfully for them right now, G2 will be forced to go for just maybe a few graded pistols. But we know, everyone knows, that G2 with pistols sometimes are even more dangerous than they are with the weaponry. So Menz are going to be definitely giving that respect to Nico and his men. We have four players now grouped up together towards A. Looking at utility, they have one smoke in the hands of Alexi B, which he might try and use for CD spawn Madden, finding Nico. But he is having none of this. He's just looking to rattle up bullets through the smoke, catch his monacy. So two players already falling for uh, for G2 without even being seen by any of the players from Ents. And with that, whatever game plan they had in mind, it looked like they were just going to be going for that play towards a bomb site, smoke off, you know, uh, towards CD spawn, maybe towards temple, rush into the bomb site, get a bomb down, maybe try and be mobile with the pistols for the post plant, but it has been quickly stymied. And this is a very aggressive positioning coming out here from Ents. Oh, they're about to walk into the killing field. Oh yeah. This is going to be messy. Madden's also playing anti-flash. So as soon as Snappy spots the first player, spams across, does get dinked through the first bullet, which is pretty nuts. Not really required to play any flash any longer, as they both come out. Smoke is in place, but it's too little too late. Just a deagle in play on Alexi. And the Finn against the world. 
doesn't even get one. Ents regained the lead. There will be a buy coming up, but more importantly, they regained the lead with five players alive. They're now starting to churn out the economy. They're going to be able to get consistent orps in play for Hades. And to be fair, he had a very lackluster first half. We've already seen some impact from here on the CT side. Absolutely. For, for G2, when it came to that first half, the credit where it's due, I think great uh, adaptation from Alexi B. Just asphyxiating that NST side, not really giving them much room to work with, which is what allowed them to get seven rounds on back to back. And then now, they win the pistol, they've done everything. This is where we need to see more coming out from this T side, right? That is something our, our, the desk alluded to as well, that G2 really have much just snappy. The flashbang was great, but somehow Alexi able to get the kill, and Nico finding Madden as well. Everyone's blinded, they're shooting through smokes, but somehow G2 come out on top. Is it four versus three? And a very, very interesting flurry of frags all the way outside of B bomb site. Nico getting a bit of revenge last round. It was Madden putting bullets into the smoke and taking him down. Now he's returned the favor. And as you highlighted, G2 with the player advantage looking to try and push it in and secure the round. But Diha just slightly moves off the angle. That skews with Nico's positioning. And in doing so, now he's even the odds. Ents have a lot of map control in terms of middle. And they have a bit of utility, but no smokes to play with as of yet. Now they've just picked one up on Hunter, and it looks like they have their eyes set on B site. It's a risky hole coming out from Enz. If you look at Hades' position, he's in Donut looking towards B. They have A complete Ooh. open as Hunter will indeed completely open up A. Diha will meet his maker. A bit of a fluff, fluff smoke there, but it's okay. Zill player advantage for the sign of G2 as they're going to be making their way on towards the B bomb side. Rotation is taking place in the form of Hades with an AWP, but Sphinx has so much to do right now. There's a gap in the smoke. That's a freebie kill, and with 18 seconds left, he could maybe even get another one. I don't think he wanted to overextend in that engagement, but takes down everybody. The smallest gaps in the smoke costs G2 so much. I, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that happened, Vince. Like, they threw the smoke into the Molotov, so the smoke hadn't fully bloomed in where they wanted it to, but they should be cognizant of the fact that there can be a gap over there. And even the moment the bomb gets planted, the second player, once you plant the bomb, you know where Spinks was. You know there's a gap in the smoke. And Hunter, I don't think he was even looking his direction, but, I mean, credit where it's due, huge, massive round from Spinks, but for G2, to just, like, lose a three versus two situation just because of a gap, a massive gap in the smoke, that's, uh, that's gonna come and bite them, Vince. Because this was a close game. It was 11 to 10. That was a golden opportunity for them to tie things up. But because of that, they're now down to the pistols, and for ends, they have a two-round lead. Extend the lead once more. Keep in mind, they started this game off in such terrifying fashion. At one stage, they were leading. 6-1. They extended that to 7-1. And then we saw G2 come back. Madden. It's a shooting gallery. And he capitalizes with two. But Jax with the deagle has backed himself two of his own. That being said, though, he has been put in his grave. Hunter with it all to do. First frag fairly cleanly. Still 71 hit points in play, but he's got Hades and Spinx to contend with. Still alive, jumping down, but he's running into the arms of Spinx. How he is still alive, I have no idea. But Spinx makes sure he gets him on the second time of asking. Hunter moving around ancient like Tarzan, just running around somehow. If he was able to get that kill on the Sphinx, that would have been ludicrous, but Ents will manage to keep the Hunter at bay. 13 to 10, then slowly but surely, the inexorable march of Ents continues. Five, back to back to back. They are on fire right now. Again, fully utility being deployed, and G2 are using a lot of utility here, trying to keep Ents at bay. See the map was being used as Nappy just comes running out like a lunatic as Hunter will punish him for it. What, what was that? I, I I think the flash missed. Yeah, that's the only thing I can assume because he was pushing out whatever happened there. Sphinx though does get a successful flashbang out and Lexi gets spilled out on middle. Hunter just keeping eyes in the back of his head, although he does have some support from Nico who finds himself at 35 HP. This Jaguar area has been hotly contested, as it so often is on Ancient, the entire map through. And typically, whoever's won these fights has won the round. Madden, still healthy, still holding the close angle. 
There are more Lee's flashes and smokes available to G2 should they choose. We have to douse off the Flames events right now as they are burning bright on their CT side. And Sphinx comes down. The timing could not have been sweeter. He's getting so much information from this. Takes the kill on Hunter and pieces out. Oh, no way, Madden. He catches the bomb. Monacy falls. 35 seconds. Jax and Nico. Nico so very low as well. At least have deployed the smoke to pick up the C4. But the jig is up. Ents know exactly where G2 are, and G2 might have to call it a day for this particular round, Vince. That AWP is very, very expensive of an investment. And with that, Ents 14 to 10, slowly but surely, like an anaconda constricting around its victim. Ents, it looked like G2 were putting up a fight, and honestly, yeah, like we said, the, the latter part of the first half, great resurgence from them, great adaptation coming out from L LXCB and his men, win the pistol, it's about the four spies, but after that, a buy rounds, it's been ends all the way. Sure, some of them were close. It did come down to the individual heroics from, you know, maybe uh, Spinks, for example. But a majority of the rounds have been ends just looking very, very comfortable, looking quite unchallenged. And again, it, it's fitting perfectly into the narrative that a desk painted earlier, where they said, you know, G2 need to win Dust 2 because Ancient is pretty much ends 99%. And they are showing why here, Vince. 27 kills to Sphinx, man. Yeah, he's been phenomenal throughout the entire game. Very late buy as well on G2. It seemed like they were scraping together a buy right at the depth. Nico, so aggressive, already up at a four position on ramp. Flash is good, but I don't know if they realize it's already up here. Sphinx is making moves down on construction side as well. He's been bested. He's got to meanwhile get to the oh. dream see Two quick fire frags, and that should be B site. Locked down, and surely this is where those flames are extinguished. G2 should be picking up their first round in six. And to make matters worse as well on the side events, if they were hoping to save these weapons, there's two players very close in the form of Hunter and Jax that may be on the prowl. What a shot from Hades that is. That is lightning fast reaction speed. And so Hunter should tread lightly. This round is done though, Black. That much we already know. G2 with an aggressive push up ramp have made it work. They did. And again, coming down to the heroics of Nico and Monacy, right? Nico getting the first one. Uh, sorry, the, the second kill, but Monacy opening things up with the AWP. And the second kill for Monacy, I I'm sure we're going to be seeing the replay. That was, again, just filthy stuff coming out from the youngster. 14 to 11. G2, can he string a few together here? Can they ensure that Ents have to battle, bite, and claw their way to a victory? Or are they going to stumble once more after a little bit of a, of a resurgence as Monacy? He, dude, that's a slow mo. <laughs> that's a slow mo. It's ridiculous. Those zoomer reaction speeds, Blair, will never fully understand. I was a zoomer once as well, Vince, but I was nowhere, nowhere as close as some of these guys. I mean, I, I was that fast. I just never hit my targets, you know? Yeah, he, he's fast and hits <laughs> stuff. Simple so. game, this Counter Strike, you know? Be fast, hit just, your shots. Just click head, forehead. Click head, so yep. see. A little bit of a attack timer getting called by Ents. They are ensuring they use all the opportunities they have to speak to their uh, the coach, talk things through. They don't want to. They don't want to allow G2 back in this because that's the thing with G2, right? They're not a complexity, but they can be a juggernaut. They they can be a team who, once things get rolling, as you saw in Dust 2, for example, once the individuals start really feeling it, it's almost. It, it defies logic as to how they will just rest open a bomb site from your hands, and, and it's insane how good they can be individually, and even as a team, like a like a well-oiled machine, as it is going to be a fast hit coming in towards A by for Nico, just looking to find an opening there, helped out by a couple of flashes from his teammates, but if you look at the rest of the ball, Hunter and Jack slowly sneaking their way in towards A as Nico and Alexi B, they strike in tandem. Bear in mind, this is ends with a full buy of their own and already it's a 5v3 favoring the side of G2. Almost an identical start for Nico as well. He had the same spawn, he went to the same position on ramp and had the same result. This time it wasn't Monacy landing crazy flicks. It was just solid Counter-Strike. Alexi can count himself lucky that he's still alive. 
But as you nailed there, this was a full purchase. That wasn't some kind of an eco bash. That was Ents at their strongest, and they still fell prey almost the exact same way. I wonder if we will see a couple of tweaks, a couple of changes to how they look to try and lock down ramp. This round isn't done just yet, though, Blair. However, Snappy losing his life definitely makes it more likely. Both the remaining CTs, though, do find themselves over on the A side of the map, one of which is Madden, but he has been crumbled. And now Hades with a chance to become a hero in Donut. Position is not been checked just yet. No, oh, he rushes the shot. Uh, Alex? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay. They were so sure that he could not possibly possibly be inside of the donut that. Like, Alexi, even though he even though he kind of heard the op shot, he was like, nah, nah, there's <laughs> no way he's there. But nonetheless, G2, that's a huge round, Vince. They lose just the one player and, and with that Entis economy I'm just quickly taking a look here yeah the money is in a very rough spot they will be able to give an off in the hands of Hades there we go all right and while the remainder of the members will just be sticking around with a few pistols trying to equalize the money out a little bit so they will have enough to eke out a full-fledged buy later on right now Hades a little bit of a cheeky boost over there trying to find something but G2 we asked if they could somehow string a couple of rounds together or have a little bit more resurgence here on this T side and they're showing it two rounds back to back and if they're able to somehow survive the scare from this kind of like a, a hero AWP in the hands of Hades suddenly it's 14-13 Vince and that's when things get a little bit more spicy and I like spicy I don't but in Counter-Strike terms yes <laughs> I like well, all spicy Vince yeah I'm not, not a big fan of food but that being said G2 may very well fall on their sword because they're trying to hit B again. There are multiple adversaries that they have to try and navigate across, but they've all been submerged by smoke and flame. That liquid fire of the Molotov has now come to a close and the smokes are about to deplete as well. This is where all hell is about to break loose and Snappy is throwing himself through the gates with the P250 still alive, joined alongside Spinks, and now it's only on Spinks, but Hunter with the flank has put them down where they stand. And that heroic last stand for Entz doesn't last for too much longer. Yeah. Wasn't too much of a danger anyway once Nico gets his first early couple of kills. But then, yeah, Hunter coming in with the flank with the final death blow. Three now, back to back for G2. And this is off Ents winning six rounds of their own. Six rifle rounds of their own on a CD side. And finally, it looks like it's kind of come to a crumbling halt. The final tackle timeout getting called by Ents right now, Vince. They have used up everything to talk things through because you got to remember, for those of you probably tuning in right now, G2 lead the, the series 1-0. Yes. Oh. They won dust through the mapping in a very, very, very convincing fashion. And for Ents heading to Ancient, everyone, the analysts, myself included, Vince, yourself as well, we all agreed that this is Ents' playground, a map that is supremely comfortable on, one of the best in the world, and G2 right now are making them sweat. The buy is going to be coming out for Ents nonetheless, but it is a round. They're desperately looking to win to close this one out. This time, though, they didn't get any great spawns to push up ramp quickly, so they're making an alteration themselves. Molly will not stop Dehab, but bullets will, and Nico sends a barrage of them to the forehead. And the Polish contingent has been momentarily capsized. Sphinx tries to thread some shots up on construction, where Nico has taken significant damage again. But G2 maintain their player advantage, albeit with a couple players very close to death. That's the thing with the A1, you really can't hear, uh, see the uh, the tracers, but Jax in the meantime finding Madden. Again, one by one, they are falling, all the defenders of Ents. Two players on his B bomb site, leaving the A bomb site in the hands of Hades. And Modesty, this time his flick will not land. Snappy has been spotted, however, and again, G2 to slow things down. Hunter sneaking in towards the A bomb site. This has been a hole in the defense off ends multiple times, which hasn't quite been exploited oh. as Modesty finds Hades. Five versus two. Hunter is going to be walking in towards the A bomb site as well. He's all the way towards CD spawn. G2 can go wherever the hell they want. But if Sphinx steps up right now, that's when something could go wrong. And Sphinx, he hears the footsteps. Him. 
He snatches at the frag. He had to. Alexi was still checking the angles. 15 seconds to play with Flash out. Sphinx needs to go huge here. But Snappy's been caught. And now Sphinx isn't so sure. He wanted to peek out on the long angle. Can't do it. Sphinx has four seconds to try and defend the bomb. But the Molotov stops him. It was so tantalizingly close, and he's about to get pinched in from the side because Nico is laid there in wait, doesn't have to push in. The bomb should do all of the work for G2. Nice effort from Sphinx, but we are tied up at 14 apiece. G2 look laser focused, Vince. They, they did it in the first half, but that was a CD side. You know, it's a more favored side of the most CD sided map in Counter Strike Global Offensive right now, and they're doing it again. They're doing it again on, on the T side, which no one expected. And I listen, I'm, I'm waiting to see Maui and Pimp break this one down because this has been an incredible few, like, string of rounds, a sequence of rounds coming up from G2. Not just individually speaking, but just able to kind of like toy with the rotations. They're making ends make mistakes. They're punishing ends for the aggressive plays. They're, 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 they're forcing ends to kind of feel uncomfortable and go for these sort of like, you know, in fact finding plays. And Nico finding Diha there through his teammate. Madden kind of getting caught off guard out in the open. And then when you have Monty so hyper aware and hitting shots like that, things are looking very interesting indeed. 14-14. That's an eco or a half buy as well. They're going to play for OT. Ents have to play for OT right now. Ooh, that is brave. That is brave. And by the way, that shot from Monacy, grand scheme of things, maybe his best today that he's connected and taken into account all the shots he connected on Dust 2. It was so rapid, such an integral moment in this best of three. And remember, the winner of this best of three moves on to the legend stage. Jax takes off the head of Diha. And Cave has now crumbled. Sphinx with the Deagle gets spotted, traded out one for one. They need Hades now to light up the scoreboard with this Deagle, but instead he's been put down with authority. And now Snappy and Madden have a tumultuous task ahead of them. And I'm not doubting their skill level, but I think this one is not one they're going to pass. Jack's also taking the initiative. Spray is good on the Madden. Takes the head of Snappy, finishes him off with the Glock. And G2, not only do they get on fire, but additionally, they have a match, a qualification point. Max Loss bonus coming in for Ents as we do enter the final round of regulation here. And they have they have everything they need. They have all the rifles. Hades will opt to go for the M4A1. I'm, I'm not too sure if he even had money to go for the AWP here. So they have everything, Vince. They have the five rifles. They have five incendiaries, five smokes, a, a ton of flashbangs. And G2 will use their own tactical pause right now. They know they have ends on the ropes. They know they just need that one more round. They don't want to take this to OT where it just resets from then on. It completely yeah. resets, and you're going to be having end starting on a CT side again. They're going to have a clean 3-0 start, and then G2 are going to be up against the wall once more. So G2, this is the golden opportunity to close it out 2-0. Finish this one off. Qualify. So much on the line, but I, I have to say, I have been impressed with his G2 side. As have I. This ancient performance has gone above and beyond expectations. Some great performances. Sphinx has hit a 30 bomb. Hunter and Nico are close, and Nico comes out second best. This is better from Entz. They take down two kills, but Monacy does bounce back with one of his own, giving G2 a lifeline to finish this game off right here, right now. The danger man, though, Nico, who's on 25 kills and he's been taken down, but don't forget his cousin, Hunter. 25 of his own as well. And he's very, very much alive. Grouped up right now with Jax. And Jax spots a player out towards Red Room. That is, of course, Diha. But he will re-peek out and catches Jax. Climbing over the boxes and now ends just two frags away from taking this to overtime. Monis is still alive. He's got an AWP. Wielding his trusty magic stick. And Hunter as well. Right now top fragging in the server alongside his cousin. He knows. He knows where... Sphinx likes to play. Sorry, Snappy likes to play. And right now, you can see the push coming out towards a halls as well. You can see Hades dug in deep. They know the hit should be coming in towards B, but it's openings. Hunter and Monacy, they need them. These two predators looking to hunt in a pack. Monacy joined alongside 
with their star players. 30 seconds, Molly, smoke in position, flashes, checking their angles, making sure they're not gonna get caught from an angle. That Molotov will afford safe passage with the bomb plant, but Hunter gets caught in the back, and Almonesi has got to pull off a huge play, but Spink shuts him down, and it's OT. And man, they, they battled it out. They finally get it done, G2. The five round streak, it finally comes to an end. And honestly, I won't lie, for a moment there, I felt G2 were just gonna run away with it. They were building up, they, they were starting to snowball into an avalanche. And gonna bury Ents, but Ents somehow, in the final dying embers of regulation, able to stave off defeat on their map pick. And now we head into OT, and when you head into OT, Vince, it's not just a, a reset of the rounds or, or the halves or the economy, it's also a mental reset. The pressure that ends were under those final few rounds, now it's kind of abated a little bit. Now they have the opportunity to grind this one back and close it out, because they are going to be starting on the more favored side. On the CD side, mm. they have all the money, all the weaponry, all the arsenal they need to work with. But for G2, can they replicate the magic? That is the question. About to find out the answers too as we get into this first round. Hot and heavy, Monacy, aggression up ramp, but there's a grenade there to greet him. As a parting gift tossed in, but he is undeterred. Still connects the shot onto Hades and just walks out. Just chill and moonwalk back onto construction where two players are wait, waiting in Jaguar and Cave. We've seen most of these excursions go in favor of G2 because of some aggressive peaks. Sphinx goes in for another one. So much damage through the smoke and some turned back in towards the end players. But Snappy peeks out through the Molotov and gets the better of Nico. He's still lurking around in the shadows as well. The audacity of the man to still be in this position for so long in the round. Is he about to peek in with a flash? He does it! There's a double spray! Snappy takes this round, snatches it away from G2. That is played to perfection. We've seen him try it multiple times in regulation, but meantime, Hunter finds Sphinx. And all of a sudden, from a 4v2 to a 3v2, where Snappy is, he's just a walking wounded. There is still a chance. Time, though, not really G2's friend at the moment. 37 seconds remain. We see the bomb drop. All the way to T spawn. Jax finds this kill. It's going to be huge, and Madden will deal with him. It's all on Hunter. One versus three, and he's making a bit of noise. Snappy, very aware as to where the play is going to be coming in from Hunter. Might actually get the bomb down here. No, he won't. Madden shuts him down. Ends with win around. They regain the lead again, Blair. This roller coaster of emotions. I'm sure many people watching right now have one of these two teams as their 3 0 in the Pickhams. A lot of people on the edges of their seats, we certainly are. It's been a great game here on Ancient thus far. And there's going to be more rounds to come. Ents with the advantage. Smoking early down onto ramp, which has been a consistent area, a consistent hotbed that G2 have tried their best to take control over. Well-placed Molotovs. Also isolating the bulk of the T's on the opposite side of the door. Alexi's effectively alone at this stage. The flash is good though, and Madden was totally stranded. I love that flash, that's perfection. Madden not expecting them to just run out through the smoke. And Monacy, not only is he precise with his shots, but he is very precise with his flashbangs as well. They know where Hades likes to play from towards Donut. Hunter, aware that DHL likes to take this duel from Redbox, or both the avenues being smoked off. Actually, DHL smoking himself off there. Allowing himself a little bit of room to breathe with it as he falls back, playing a little bit more passively. But they've lost so much of real estate here, Vince. No eyes inside a donut, no eyes in the red room. Sphinx. Oh, he lights them up through the smoke! Alexi B and Jax will fall. And Sphinx, he needs no vision. He can do it all by his lonesome as Lurk coming in from Donut doesn't matter. Hades and Snappy will deal with both Hunter and Nico, leaving Monacy. Young Monacy in a one versus four, and that my honest opinion, Vince, it looks very unlikely. 40 seconds to play with the only thing working in his favor is he's got a little bit of time, but time will begin to betray him. He needs a pick early. The issue is he has pretty much no idea where these CTs are currently hiding. He's got the right idea, one's to the back of B-Site, another around Cave Jaguar area, but he's about to walk out into the open and Spinks has him 
dead to rights. Entz, 17-15 in the lead, but that round was looking like it was slipping away before the man on your screen just nailed them through the smoke. I don't even know how Sphinx gets those kills. Like, just lines them up perfectly reading the pathing coming up from the two members of G2. And I think the G2 did a great job initially. You just, you know, burst out through the double doors. The smoke was keeping them at bay. Great flash of Monus there initially to allowing Nico to get that opening kill. But nonetheless, 17-15 for Ents. And what I feared for G2, Vince, it's Ents having a flawless CD side. It is starting to transpire. We still have one more round remaining here in the first half of OT number one. A bit of a jump there from Madden. That looked scary. And again, if you look at the money, if you look at the buy, it's not great. You lose two rounds back to back. You lose some pistols and a couple of AK-47s. As Madden is going to find Nico, and he will be chopped down at ramp. Concerning aspect for Ents here is, sorry, G2, I should say, is everything that G2 were getting success from before with Nico's pushes up ramp, with having ramp control early on, has now been found and fixed by Ents. There appears to just be rock blows, uh, roadblocks everywhere. There's nowhere they can move. There's nowhere they can run without Ents being there, waiting for them, anticipating that play. Finally, it seems we're catching what Ents are truly capable of on Ancient. Better late than never. Molly down. Hunter will deal with Snappy before he can retreat. So at least it's down to a three on four. And all three players on G2 still in with a shot to maybe turn this around. Snatch it out of the jaws of defeat. It feels like if this goes 3 0 OT, that might be too far gone. However, Alexi now able to put the smoke down, cordon off some of these areas and focus their attention and their fire onto the site. Diha gives his position away. They cannot deny this bomb plant. There's no gap in the smoke this time to exploit from Ents. So it's going to be going down and so will Diha. Munasi through the smoke connects, vanquishes him from the site. And now Hades, alongside Sphinx, is going to try and sneak their way, crawl their way onto the site. Sphinx, last man standing. Last round of OT. He's going for this. And if he's going to get any success, he's got to pick up the pace here. The bomb is ticking away. That fuse is getting dangerously close to exploding. First kill won't go his way. And G2 makes sure, bare minimum, it's not a clean sweep in this first OT half. There was a two-man disadvantage early on there for G2. But somehow, great coordination, just simple grouping up together. They read those angles being held by the players of Ents. You saw, you, I, I do believe it was Madden playing inside of Jaguar. They knew exactly what he was going to be playing. Alexi B with some huge kills coming out as well. Great composure, again from G2, despite being in a disadvantageous situation. And they give themselves a lifeline. They at least give themselves something, something, a little bit of a cushion to work with. As now, they will be heading towards the CD side. Here's a question, though, for me, Vince. Like, mm -hmm. which CD side are we going to be seeing from G2? Are we going to be seeing the first early rounds where they look, they were floundering, they were looking lost? Or are they going to continue what they did later on, where they were just basically constricting the entire map and not giving any space for Ents to breathe? Excellent questions, Blair. We're about to find out the answer now. Very quick turnaround. G2 on the CT side. But he needs to get that smoke down, but he's taking so much damage through that smoke. 2 HP left, still alive, but not for much longer. And Sphinx doesn't get the second kill, but significant damage to Hunter and will force him away from red. The bloodlust getting a little bit too much with Sphinx. He gets a huge kill on the Modesty and then a little over eager there. Hope and catch someone off guard, but Hunter, even though he does get tagged for the HP, never mind, he's been tagged down to zero HP. Diha will decapitate him. And ends. Man advantage, 4v3, as they start prowling around this Jaguar lane area, slowly congregating on towards B bomb site, where Alexi B and Nico line wait, looking to hold the line, looking to tie up the score line. Hades, the fastest of flicks. That's such an integral moment in this game. Alexi B still alive, but not for much longer. And Jack's off on A site. He has to save. Has to save, yep. The money situation is still grim. Even on OT, the CTs will struggle. And therefore, Ents will have two map points on Ancient and a chance to take us to the decider of Mirage. Doesn't seem like they're going to run Jack's down, so. He should be given some choices as to where he wants to try and piece out of here. There could be an AK actually dropped over on that body he can see at the T side of mid. That would be a nice addition, just whether he wants to risk it or not. But this round is done. 
And this game continues to deliver, Blair. We thought coming into this, we're in for a real interesting affair. The first map had its moments, it was fairly one-sided. This has been neck and neck throughout. I think Jax is going to survive. Just about. I think he was looking to pick up the AWP at the very last second. Yeah. But unfortunately, not quite able to retrieve it for Monacy. But yeah, like as we said, we were expecting Ents to win this game. We were expecting them to win this particular map of Ancient. But G2, they really made them sweat, Vince. And for G2, they're going to be kicking themselves, you know, a couple of rounds here and there if they were able to convert them. But honestly, it's been a fantastic showing from Nico and his men. But Ents, in overtime, they seem to be like a reinvigorated animal looking very very clean indeed sure they lost one round there on the cd side but able to finish the first opening round here 18 to 16 map point right now for the finish org and two opportunities now for ends to close this one out and take us to mirage we will find the decide we will find which team is going to be moving on ahead madden he's going to get a free kill alexi be completely unaware as a possibility of madden being nearby the right hand side so g2 Early on, losing their IGL. That means Marenz, four more frags to find. Which is kind of crazy considering the position of his teammates. It's one thing if they had mid control and he gets caught like that. They didn't have eyes on mid. Hunter was kind of bobbing and throwing but didn't really have full vision over this area. Such an odd decision. At an integral moment in this game. And Entz already in a good position to just outright win this map now in OT. I've been given a golden gift. And will they run with it? Nico gets tagged by the smoke. Still skews his vision, though. Gonna be hiding in there. Maybe waiting for a flash from one of his teammates. Or for someone else to arrive. But instead, it's Entz. And that pain train comes hurtling down the tracks onto the site again. And it's looking good for an Entz second map victory. Hunter is gonna get caught in the side. And Entz take us to a third.